Like the older dudes. Now we aging like fine wine. How we both do? Peep the shade on the timelines. This time post the cool. Oh, hey there. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. Hello, whatever time it is, wherever you are. It's morning where I am, so that's what I'm sticking with. My name is Brian Hare. I am here on behalf of Free Salon Education Live, here with your Thursday morning not color class. Uh, I'm actually really, really excited because we're getting some new stuff from me today. This is going to be a cutting class. What? I know, I'm excited too. But this is actually gonna be a couple of classes framed around this look. I put a bunch of thought into it because I was thinking about like what's going on nowadays in style and fashion in general. And I know we're seeing that huge resurgence of that kind of 90s style. And I think it's cool. I think it's returning to a time of just like simpler looks. You know, you think about what sandwiched that, you know, the 80s, everything, there was more, 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 more layers, more accessories, more everything, and then the 2000s got back to that as well, and we're sort of living in this pocket of that 90s where it was cleaner lines, simpler styles, less is more kind of effect, and I think that's really cool. So I wanted to create a look that sort of embraced that while still modernizing it for now, because you don't want to just do looks from that time frame. So the haircut that we're gonna do today, it's gonna be sort of that expanded, lots of volume bob kind of a, a look, like a throwback bob. Uh, what it's featured in this is gonna be lots of expanded size, lots of creating a nice strong shape, but we're gonna be doing it with the tri razor, so that's how we're gonna modernize it. I feel like if you go in, you can of course do this and club cut it with scissors, but that's gonna give maximum, maximum expanse, maximum body, uh, a much firmer shape. And I wanna kind of soften that a little bit because I think that that's what has really been, you know, how they'll look back at this time frame of style is that everything is much softer. The colors are softer these days, lines are softer, silhouettes are a little bit softer. So we're gonna take a strong shape and then just sort of soften the edges a little bit. So it's gonna be a haircut that's founded a lot in graduation. I'm gonna be referring to it a lot as a bevel because in my brain, that's just how it lives. Uh, and then next week, we're gonna be going over the color that you see here. And then finally, we're gonna be going over a style. You notice that she's got some curly hair, so this haircut will be, I'll be referencing a lot because it is something that I'd like to see on curly hair. Now that we've gotten to an era where I see a lot more guests embracing their natural texture, we're gonna do a haircut color and style that embraces that. 
So we, this is the natural texture of this mannequin. They all kind of have that little bit of a loose curl that you can sort of nurture into uh, something a little bit more defined. So that's what we're going with. Can you do this on straight hair? Sure. You know what to expect. I'll go over as we go over. But this is really a haircut that's going to be featured for more of a textured uh, finished style. So we'll give her a, a 360. I'll get from not behind her. <laughs> so we'll go all the way around. You see we're going to feature this nice beveled graduation line that travels from the back to the front. There's a nice amount of swing in this haircut. It's not a super stacked look, but you'll see once we get in there what we're going to be dealing with. And then again, coming through the side, you've got that nice, you know, I, I just refer to this as that nice 90s kind of look at all that great thick hair, that, that nice swing in the bob, I'm into it. And then around the front, we've got a little bit of that softness that I think characterizes our more modern look. We dig it, we dig it, I'm into it. Let's jump into it. All right. So, like I said, our tool of choice today, we're going to be going over the tri-razor. Matt's little baby. I'm a big fan of this because any hairdressers out there that have sliced the crap out of their fingers, which is any of us who've ever worked with a razor, will be happy to know that now there's a tool where it's literally impossible for you to do that. I could, like, throw this into my pocket and not have to worry about any kind of injury, but I still get to use a really great razor that helps me get through a haircut. I am a self-proclaimed, you know, I, I, I can be a little lazy at times, I'm gonna be honest. So I like something that helps me get through a haircut faster. And there is no faster cutting, maybe a Floby, than a razor haircut. So I'm a big fan of this tool because it's got three tools in my one hand. I don't have to reach for different things. I've got my 100% cutting, my 50% cutting, and my 25%. So I've got texture in hand, I got full cutting in hand, I can't hurt myself. It's, it's a pretty idiot proof razor, so I'm a fan. So I got all the tools I need right here. Got my comb, got my razor. Oops, I don't have my head on straight. But since when is that a requirement? All right, so we're going to go with where they wear the part on this, just like any modern day nice structured bob. Yeah, and the mannequin, we went off to this side. Does that look adorable? Let's go a little deeper. The natural part, four quadrants. Off of the natural part. Two front, two back, divided at the ear. Keep it clean. Because I always do. I'm a precision hair cutter. And I like precise lines. Hello, everyone in the chat room. I do see you. I'm just. Focusing on my nice clean lines for this haircut. See, there you are. I see you. Hi, everyone. Matt's alive. He's holding the camera. So once we get to the back, something that's very characterized by my haircuts is putting a bunch of different haircuts in one. So we're going to divide at the occipital and treat underneath as one haircut and above as another. Not really, but that's, again, how it works in my brain. So I'm just going to go ahead and part it down the center. And then at the occipital, just go ahead and take that and clip it away. We will get to it momentarily, but it's not where we're starting. Excuse me. I know you guys that are just tuning in are wondering when did Matt get all these tattoos because this looks exactly like one of Matt's cutting classes. But it's not. It's Brian. It's me. Surprise. All right. Where do you want me to stand for this? I'm not used to... Wherever you want. Ho -ho. I'll, I'll figure it out. You'll figure it out? That's darling. All right. So I've got my 
Let me check. Okay, yeah. See when they look down, you realize your line's all jagged. Keep it clean, folks. So, quick note. A little preview of what we're gonna do. All of this is going to be my foundation for what's gonna hold up all that body. So that nice expansive shape that we had in the finish, take that into consideration. How big do you want that and how much density do they have? So if they don't have that thick of hair up here, you may wanna be using a little bit less under here because all of this is going to be what that graduated line is that expands out. Everything from the occipital down, its job is really just to hold it. Almost like an ice cream cone with the scoop of ice cream on top. So how big do you need your cone, your cone for how big do you want that ice cream to sit? So this is a little high right now. So I might actually take a little bit from this so that I can have a slightly larger bump up top. Did you just make up the ice cream cone thing? I did. That was a good one. Thanks. I like that one. You guys saw it here first. We've already hit 100 messages. I love that. Nice job, guys. Keep the chat going. Yeah, keep the chat going. Go get some razors. Chat more. All right, excellent. So now I'm just gonna start in the center. And again, we're gonna be thinking about, I'm gonna keep going with the ice cream thing because now I want ice cream. So you gotta be thinking, we gotta plant this ice cream cone foundation. So how short do I want the nape? How much foundation do I want this to have? The tighter that I bring this in, the higher that it's gonna hold my hair up once I get above that occipital, the lower, therefore wider that I make this section here, the lower that's gonna sit. You gotta think about where I want that graduation line to land. Also keeping in mind that that graduation line, my plan for this haircut is gonna connect to the front. So if I go too, too high, then that's gonna make me have to shoot down much, much lower. And that's not really the look I'm going for. I like the look of this just being sort of a big swollen, almost pretending to be a one length, but modernizing it so that it's not actual one length. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna find it somewhere in the middle. I don't know what that, you know, graduation, per, like I don't have a protractor, so if anybody wants to screenshot that, figure it out and tell me, I don't care. But that's about where we're gonna live. So I'm gonna take a nice vertical section. And then this is where you determine. Because we're working with a razor and not scissors, you're not looking at this side, you're looking at this side of your finger. This is gonna be how long the hair is, not this side. It's a little bit different than you go with scissors. So I'm thinking, I'm gonna rest my knuckles against the neck to hold me there. I have her tilted forward, so it's gonna give me a little bit more graduation. It's always a nice little surprise that you've given yourself a little bit more cushion because you had them look down. Give a nice firm grip on that so that my razor can just glide right through. And the haircut's done. Insert the Gwyneth Paltrow thing right here where she swipes her face and that's it, go to bed. Um, so one of the things that I love about working with a razor is like I said earlier, the fact that it's not a straight line, it automatically tapers the line for you. So it adds that softness. It works great with curls because it, curls look best when they taper off. So everyone that's gonna say, what, you can't use a razor on curly hair. Curly haircuts actually come out better with a razor. So get with it and shut up. What you need to keep in mind when cutting with a razor though, is how much taper you want. That you're in control of because that's gonna be uh, dictated by how far of a drag you give each cut. The shorter your swipes, the less taper you're gonna have, the more structure that cut is gonna have. The longer your swipe with the razor, the more taper and the less structure. So because this is the structured part of the haircut, I'm gonna be using these shorter swipes that you see. So again, I've taken that section, 
taking about half of my old section, married it in so that I can get a general idea. Again, it's razor cutting, so it's not an exact sharp science. I don't even know if you can see that I'm holding. There you go. There's a little bit of guide. So just a general idea of where my guide is. What I like to do when I'm doing any kind of razor cutting to see the guide, I know the guide's in there, come out, come out, come out, and then you see it pop out. Can you see on this side of my finger what I'm talking about? So like I come out and then once I see that guide pop on this side of my hand, can you see it there? That's when I know to cut because now I've reached my guide. So short swipes, boom. And then we're just gonna keep working, taking a little bit of my previous, a little bit of what's to come, pull that straight out. And what this is doing is that when I go to create that nice big shape by having this foundation in this formation, it's gonna make sure that in all directions, it's holding up the actual meat of this haircut because there's gonna be a lot of hair to hold up. So I want a nice graduation that's gonna do that all the way around. Pull that straight back. Once I see my guide pop out, little short swipes. Ah, oh, gorgeous. What? Did you know that I was the best hair cutter that ever lived? Because you do now. On the other side, we're just doing the same thing. Razor cutting is also fun because you don't have to stress out quite as much about hand position like you do with scissors. I mean, I don't. Ah, ah. So what's cool, even though it's razor cutting, when you look at her, you can see, I'm try, sorry, I'm trying to chase you. You can see when I move, because my black shirt mixes in, that nice bevel, AKA graduation, that little scoop. So this is gonna be what lays under, what holds up the star of the show, the big, bouncy, ridiculous curls. Boom. Uh, can you get this result with scissors? I mean, of course you can get the foundation, the shape, all that with scissors, but really, there is no way to get that perfect tapered end like with a razor. I love it when I know that there are no two hairs that come to the same point. Therefore, I'm not going to have, it's not going to be too weighty of a haircut, which is also going to make it grow in a lot softer. And people are going to love that because it just gives more. I like when my guests come in and they still look good when they get here. That means they probably looked good the whole time, which is good. And if you guys are, so if you're used to using scissors and you want to check out and get a razor, you can go to our online store, Shop FSE, which is right here. And you can see right on the front page, you can get all your extra blades, the combs that we're using, everything that we're using uh, right on there. So just shopfse.com. It is really cool. Like... I'm not just saying it because Matt's right here. I actually do really like cutting with this razor. It's one of those things, to be totally honest, where I'll forget how much I like it, and then I'll like have a random bout of inspiration, and I'll bring it out, and I'll do a haircut, and I'll be like, oh my god, I forgot how much I love this. And then everyone gets razor cuts for like three months. It's fantastic. Um, anyone who has thought razors were cool, but like maybe were a little bit nervous, this is a great way to get into it because it's so versatile. Like I said, you've got your texture, you've got your cutting, you've got everything all in one hand and it's way safer. The amount of times that I have removed my fingerprints on straight razors, let me tell you, it's nice not having to worry about it. You do keep making me nervous though because I have one time using this, cut myself with that 50% side. Really? Yes. <laughs> Watch me. I'm just and I, I mean, we've already got one on the books of me openly <laughs> bleeding on the show. Maybe we don't need to go for two. I was literally like, you just keep doing that. I'm like, I'm going to tell you right now. And I'm going to tell the world, like, I, be a little careful. You don't have to be super careful, but he's going to be bleeding. <laughs> okay. There's your new commercial for the razor. If you have tiny fingers, they could slip in there. 
Yeah, I like, don't <laughs> don't give it to a child or droopy That's skin. Like, it's there's a whole bunch of caveats to this. It's safer than a straight razor. It is much. Yes. Okay, so now we're going to be starting to build that nice graduation that is the actual haircut itself. So, in taking a nice fine section, whatever works for your guest density of hair, I'm not going to sit here and tell you how thick to make the section. You're a grown child, make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. But you want to be able to see the hair underneath because, like I said, we are choosing to use this ice cream cone foundation underneath to hold up where I want to put this weight line. So rather than coming right down and creating no bevel, I want to bring this out a little bit, knowing that it's going to give me a soft bevel that's going to pretty much connect it to what I have underneath. Again, keep in mind how much swipe you want is going to dictate how tapered your ends are going to be. So I want this first section a little bit more foundational. So I'm just going to come in. I'm attacking it slightly from the side because in my opinion, that's how I get a line that I like. Is it the only way to do it? Of course it's not. But in my experience, I know that I can get a little bit more of a line coming from the side. If there's anything that maybe you swiped a little bit long and you've got a random hair that's too long, all right, grip it and rip it. Get rid of it. That's what's great about this. You can get really cool haircuts without the stress of precision. Try to keep it consistent on both sides. Excellent. So now we're just going to go ahead and work all the way up the back, deciding where you want your weight line, and then changing your elevation to match that up. So I've got my, uh, my guide under there from the previous section. So I know that I want to elevate about the same because I want it to meet that weight line. I want a heavier weight line, but then using the razor to keep it from being too sharp of a line. It's the best of both worlds. Hit it from the side. As I come up the head, especially once I hit the parietal ridge, I like to start making my swipes a little bit longer to taper the ends a little bit more because that's going to give it more swing and more freedom to move about while still maintaining that nice heavy graduation line. Like I said, anything that's a little too much, get in there, get it out of there. Coming up. Giving myself, I don't know, for this mannequin, they're three quarters of an inch sections, but human heads will require more or less. So now that we're hitting this parietal, now you're faced with, do you want to maintain that line or do you want to maintain the type of graduation? Because pulling the hair at the exact same spot is going to totally change what happens to that line. If I elevate it, to maintain the graduation that I've been using, then I'll continue that bevel up around the head. But for this, I think what keeps it that more like old school haircut is I am going to keep it at that same line. I'm choosing the line over the graduation. Does that make sense? Yeah. I was asking myself because I know everything. JK. And like I said, now that we're up over that parietal, we are maintaining that line, but I want longer swipes to give it more flow. It's all about the flow. Ah, like butter. Love a fresh blade. One of my favorite things I ever heard in the argument of, can you use a razor on curly hair? Doesn't it damage it? A fresh razor blade is sharper than your dull ass pair of scissors. So no, don't worry about it. You're going to be good. Get a fresh blade in there. Anyone who's messing, who feels like it's tearing the hair up, you're using an old blade and it's your fault. All right. 
this is it. This is where we're really setting that line. We're up at the top now, I'm going straight on, not coming from the side anymore because now I'm really just giving that nice long swipes. to give the outermost layer of this haircut lots of freedom to move. Oof, oof, girls, yes, yes. All right, so now we'll go to the short side of the part, or the small side of the part, I mean. I will section around parietal, roughly, because that's where her density dictates I go. I'm actually gonna come here, because there we go. So now you just decide what shape you want this to be. Do you want less of the shoot down? Do you want to, like, would you need to create more of a horizontal line here for the look that you're going for? Do you want to kind of continue this graduation that we've got? Yes, we do. That's what we want to do. So I'm going to come in here. Connect my sections front and back to see what I've created line-wise with the softness of my razor. And then I'm going to do the same thing. This is the fun part. I always like cutting this part of a bob more with the razor because this is just cool. So instead of cutting it down at no elevation, I am going to bring it out ever so slightly because it is just going to add the littlest bit of bevel, which is going to help expand it, which is what we're going for. So I've got my guide. Get, I pivot my fingers to match that angle that I want to create. And then once I got it, you just slide the razor down the top of your fingers and you're done. And you go have a sandwich. Maintain. And there you go. Go back in if there's any little stragglers. Make them wish they hadn't been born. And again, because I elevated this out a little bit to give it a little bit of bevel, you're not getting a sharp line here. We cut with a razor and we elevated it. So don't be freaking out if you're like, uh, uh, the hairs are at different lengths. That's the whole point of this haircut. No two hairs are the exact same on this head. Take down the rest, give myself a little elevation, find my guide, come down the top of the fingers. It's cool, right? I can hear everyone watching this video going, yeah, that's cool. So once I get that line in there, I can already see a little bit of this. It's making me happy. I just bring it back to make sure that there's nothing crazy overhang. I'm okay with this stuff. This will all blend in the haircut once the curls are brought into fruition. Even if they don't have curly hair, I think that just the pieciness that this will give, it's got just enough structure to be obvious what we were going for, but takes enough structure out that it makes it modern and cool and fun. On the other side, we're gonna be doing the same thing. My first section, right around the parietal. See what we've done. What have we done? I see my angle that I've created. Mimic my fingers. Bring it down the hand. Check yourself where you wreck somebody else. Oh, I'm in love. And then as we move up on the heavy side of the part, this is where you're gonna need a little bit of customization deciding on what to do with your guests. If they want bangs or if they want this. For this haircut, I am gonna leave it so that this is just a nice heavy side because I like that. I want this haircut expanding in every direction that I can. So I am just going to go ahead and continue with what we're doing, continue with that heavy graduation line because I know that it's being softened by the razor, so I'm not concerned with it being 
too heavy that it's unattractive. It's actually going to be very cool. You see, even wet. Come on, come on. Who gave us permission? So with this last section, oops, come in. Make sure I don't have anything crazy that doesn't make sense hanging out. I'll comb it back so that it plays with the graduation of the back of the haircut to see how well they're going to go together. See, there's one or two little culprits that will not play nice, so you just make them send them home to the floor. So then, this is basically, no, not basically, this is the haircut. So with your guests, you would come through and then based on their hair type, determine what kind of texturizing you might want to do. They might have a hair type where even though we've made the ends a little bit softer by going in with 100% cutting, you might still want to take a little bit more out. This can get a little weighty on some folks, more where the front and the back meet on the heavy side of the part. So I'm a really big fan of then going in. And just like you would take some texturizers to just sort of break this whole bit up a little bit, I'm going to go in and decide how much texture I want to put. She doesn't have a crazy density, so I'm actually fine with just using the 25% because that's just going to go in and give me a little bit of oomph. You see, the hair is still there. The hair is still this long. There's just now a little less, just a little, 25% less to be exact. And now that end is going to have a little bit more lightness to it so that it can flow and move much easier. Knowing that that's going to help as much as it is, see this density, just like a real person, there's going to be random areas where there's just more hair. So I've got some, some real heaviness from this front because I've got so much hair coming to here. So it's actually not a bad idea to come in. You know what, let's hit it with a 50. What? Give yourself a little swipe. Make those ends a little bit piecier so that when this hair gets nice and curly and styled, there's nothing holding that down and it's just gonna get as big as we want it to. Yeah, she's pretty gorgeous. Like I'm not mad at her. And then I played with it with my hands a whole bunch. And then look, this is what happened. And this is your haircut. So as you can see, we've got our graduation in the back that's being held up by our tasty little ice cream cone underneath where all this shorter hair has that nice graduation to not only hold it up this way, up the back of the head, but by bringing everything straight back, it left a little bit more weight in these corners where a lot of the times you wanna take weight out, but it's leaving me weight in these like foundational corners that's going to expand this haircut in every direction. Even in these areas, it's not gonna fall where that pocket of no hair is along that hairline. Because I left a graduation that's gonna swing forward, it's gonna push this bit out too, helping me get volume everywhere. So long as you understand why you're doing something, you can do whatever you want. And I knew that that's why that was gonna do that, so I chose to do that. So what we'll focus on for next week is then how to take this cool haircut, add an equally soft and natural looking color, like you see here, and then we'll go over styling and all that fun stuff. So now that the cut is done and you were looking at this beautiful after mannequin, do we have any questions before we fully wrap up? So there was a question. Is a, Joe's asking if the razor is available in the UK. We ship worldwide straight out of our office here. So, so yes. um, the only place it's not available right now is Australia, and I think that's because they're in lockdown. And they don't allow shipments in uh, via the U.S. Postal Service. So We'll hide it in a kangaroo. So we're just waiting. Uh, for that, as soon as it opens back up, we will have the shipping. And Jess, I saw your question. I will, I'll send you a message on FSE now and explain uh, a little deeper on that um, about getting blades. Um, let's see. Thank you. Is it Pena? Pena? Would you say that? Yeah. Pena. P 
Pena. Um, I love this razor. Of course, the mannequin is beautiful. Have you ever seen an ugly mannequin? Yes. Yes. There are plenty. There's super ugly mannequins. I mean, what is ugly, though? Of course. Yeah. What, what is your standard of beauty? I've seen ugly haircuts on mannequins. I think what you meant to say is that this haircut's incredible. Uh, would this be considered an A-line? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it would. Yeah. Because you've got that. And it's like an A, but like a... Line. Like a U. Like if you look at it from overhead, is that where the A comes from? Like when you look overhead and it's like an A? Yeah. Well, this is more like a capital U. Because it has that nice softness in the back. Oh, kangaroos are in lockdown too. Poor thing. Will curly hair do this? Yeah. It's doing it right in front of us. Yes. Um, will it work on thin hair? Uh, yeah. You're just going to want to take into account everything that I said about what you're trying to leave. It just You have to think about your density. You know, if you're trying to do this haircut on really fine hair, then you're going to want to you have as much hair to create your weight line as possible because you need the weight to go into the weight line. So if you're trying to do this whole thing, you might shrink this ice cream cone section underneath to like something much smaller so that you can preserve as much hair as possible to create some volume and density up top. Um, I, not really, not like your typical up and around layers. I'm sort of using mostly just graduation and then the razor helps me put even more lightness into the graduation. I know that usually graduation means like solid, smooth, like we think of something much uh, more structural when we think of graduation. And by using the razor, it gives me sort of the point of what layers are for. Like I have my, I built my weight up to here, but also freed that weight up to move a little bit by tapering the ends with the razor. I want to see if you have a, a thought on this. I also have a thought on this. Uh, I have this cut, but the short part tends to curl out, and I hate how I can fix that. The underneath... Like the ice cream cone part we're talking about? That's what I was wondering if that's what they're saying or... That's what I assume because on people with curly hair, that's obviously not a problem. If it's on straight hair and it's a short bob and you've got that, if that is something like they have a lot of density there, I personally, I push for an undercut. Like if that's an issue... And you hate it, I just say then undercut, get rid of it. There, it doesn't need to be there for, you know, if their hair's that dense and the haircut doesn't need that, those, I call them the haunches, those areas right there where there's just tons of hair, then undercut it and get rid of it. It'll make it easier for them to blow dry. It'll guarantee that they'll come see you more so they can keep up with that undercut. And uh, it's just super helpful. Turn the head a little bit. So one I thing just I, love this angle. I like to do, it's a good angle, but... Um, I want to talk about the back because what you can do is it's not one tool fits all either when you're doing hair cutting. So for me, I would do this entire cut like Brian did with the razor. Um, but then at the very end, if I wanted a more structured outer perimeter, I would go in with my scissor and I would do all that detail work to make it a nice fine line in the dry detail. So you can always mix and match your tools. Don't think, oh, I'm doing a razor cut, so I got to stick with the razor the whole time or I'm doing a scissor cut. To stick with the scissor, you can always use maybe the 50% texture side on um, your scissor cuts just to add a little texture to it um, yep. or to pop in a little more curl or to lighten up certain areas. So um, I like the tri razor a lot on bangs. Yeah. And like bangs. I'll do a full like scissor cut, but you just, it's impossible to replicate the softness of a razor yeah. with scissors. And bangs are someplace that you want as much softness as possible, especially like on the longer ones, if someone's got thicker hair and they're going for that curtain fringe, you don't want it to look like tassels around a curtain. Like you want softness and the razor helps to give that. It's definitely a, um, a in my opinion, a myth or people use a, a dull razor 
and create it doesn't create frizz it creates softness on the ends which right you know it depends on how people style their hair maybe softness isn't the best thing for some people that style their hair maybe some people have more coarse hair so you know it's not it doesn't fit everybody um a razor but there's nothing fits everybody exactly so the people that a razor works well on it's going to blow your mind how well it works like it's going to make you really happy that you chose that if you know why you're using it, who you're using it for, and what to expect. And that's what we're here for, is yeah. to help expand your understanding of what it can do. Uh, this is a statement. Yeah, totally. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, don't go into this razor cut with the hair all, like, thirsty and angry, and you're just pissing it off more. So use proper products, get rid of your frizz the right way. Jess is saying we should do a haircut showdown, me and you. That'd be hilarious. Yeah, that would be hilarious. Like dueling pianos? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm down. That would be really funny. But the fun part of it is that we're, we're both going to get to the same place in completely different ways. Yeah. That's what it's, we're artists. We're all artists. We, you know, one artist isn't better than another. It's all different. And we'll get this haircut done in our own ways. Like I tell my clients, you know, because it becomes like a question, you know, whether you're in my chair or next to me in Danielle's chair, you can have the exact same consultation. The results are going to come out different. You know, your book is going, your book should be built with people that like your style of doing things. Like that's, that to me is an effective hairdresser when you have amassed a group of people that like and appreciate your style. Awesome. Sweet. We definitely, we should do that sometime. We I'm should down. Have somebody like, like Christina pick what the cut is and not tell, well, maybe Ooh. we can be more neutral. We're not turning tell, this into a reality show. Not tell anybody what it is. And then that day. We I like that it. you say we should get someone more neutral. I know. And then I said Christina. But because she would help me out and not you. Yeah, she probably would. <laughs> she would. Um, yeah, that would be super fun. Maybe someday we'll do Yeah, that. all right. When maybe I run like out of ideas, I'm going to be like, I don't know what to do this week. Challenge, let's do it. Maybe we'll do it for like a charity thing or something. That'd be fun. Oh, that's cute. Raise money or something. Yeah. Um, you ship to Argentina. Yes. We ship. Oh, I said that already, right? I don't know. Yeah. Yes. Everywhere but everywhere. Australia. Right? Yes. But once lockdown lifts, then we'll be back in Australia. Yes. So just go to our online store. We have tons of videos. We have a weekly blog that's written so you guys can learn stuff. Um, you can get to our community from there. Look, Brian's how to blow dry curtain bangs. Look at read that. about that. Um, Matt with models. The community. Um, you can get to our FSE online, FSE Now community and download our app. We've got all kinds of different ways to stay connected with each other. Yep. Yeah, I'm into it. Come play with us. All right. FreeSalonEducation.com. Download the app. Look me up. You can start with Instagram because it's tattooed on my arm and you've been staring at it. It's at hairstyle. Uh, uh, that's my social pretty much everything. So if you need to find me anywhere or want to play video games with me, let's just look for that. Uh, yeah, come play, ask questions. That's what we're here for. I love these interactions. I love all this stuff. Uh, and then next week, we'll be returning to this beautiful, perfect, mind-blowing mannequin and working on her color for you guys. So thank you so much. Go download our app and come play with us and watch our videos and tell Matt how much you love my cutting and get you a tri razor. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you guys. I can watch you put everything away. In my pocket? <laughs> yes. Not worried about it. See you guys. <laughs>